It's been a while since I started a cosplay. Woo! Before Anime Boston was cancelled, I had bought the fabric for a whole nother cosplay, and then I realized I wasn't gonna need it. It usually takes me like a month to three months to finish a cosplay, and right now it's May 1st. Wait, May 1st? No, May 25th. <laughs> so I thought I would start a cosplay and finish it and save it for when conventions start to happen again. I'm going to be making a stocking cosplay from Panny and Stocking. Uh, I made the angel version of Stocking's outfit like a while ago and oh, oh. But uh, I always wanted to make her regular outfit. So now that I'm more comfortable with patterns, I thought I would get a pattern that closely looks like her outfit and then I would adjust it as needed. So, this is the pattern I got. I'm going to be using part A. I have no idea whether this is going to be one part or two parts. I try to leave my videos like two parts, but when I opened it, it seemed like it was going to be kind of easy. So, we'll see. I'm going to stop myself right here. Hi, it's editing me. I'm wearing bunny ears. I ended up filming a lot of stuff for this cosplay, and when I put it all into Premiere Pro, it ended up being over like 30 hours of footage. So in an effort to make the whole video faster, I tried out a new editing style. So I'm sorry if things seem like they're going by a lot faster. I was trying to make the video overall shorter. A lot of the times my cosplay videos are starting to get really, really longer. So I thought, hey, let me try something new and hopefully it seems shorter. Um, if at any point I'm going too fast, uh, there is this little thing. If you just click on settings, playback speed, just slow it all down. <laughs> Either way, thank you so much for clicking this video, and I hope you enjoy! So this is the fabric that I got. Uh, these two are new, these are old. I got four and a half yards of Casa Black, and one yard of Costume Knit Blue. It's like some stretchy stuff. This is old white fabric that I used for my other stocking cosplay, and this is old white fabric from my Rize cosplay. And this is Bruce. All up in my everything. Now that I've cut out all of the pieces, I'm going to be using the pattern piece for this sleeve fan right here to make the arm for stocking's arm piece. Now, because the bottom of the sleeve eases into the armband, I'm gonna be folding it in half and then using it to extend out and make my own arm pattern piece. To make this easier on myself, I went into my closet and I found a shirt that I like the arm of. This made it a lot easier for me because I didn't know how much to do for the width all the way down and I kind of wanted the sleeve to come in towards the elbow and then to come a little bit out towards the cuff. So now that I'm done cutting out all of the pattern pieces, I split them up and I specifically took all the pieces that had A on them, which are pieces one through eight. So now I'm gonna be using pieces one through eight, except piece number six, and instead I'm gonna be using my own sleeve pattern that I made, and I'm gonna be using all those pieces to just cut out black fabric. Had to come back. Also, do not cut out three and four in black. Those are gonna be white later, and I'm gonna adjust them later. <laughs> so only pieces one, two, five, seven, and eight are going to be cut out in black. So with pattern piece number one, step one, Stay stitch neck edge of bodice front one. Make bust darts press towards waist. Make waist darts press towards center. For anybody that needs it, stay stitch. Stitch one fourth from cut edge in direction of arrows. This stitch stays in permanently to prevent stretching on curved edges. Dart. To make dart with right sides together, fold the fabric through the center of the dart, bringing broken lines and small dots together. On inside, place pins at right angles to broken lines. Stitch the dot from wide end to point. Just like that. So on the pattern piece, as you mark out your dots, you're basically gonna bring them together and then make a dart. 
So the same as step one, we're gonna take both of the number two pattern pieces, step two. Stay stitch neck edge of bodice back two. Make waist start press towards center. With right sides together and raw edges even, pin front to back at shoulder and side seams, stitch. So the same thing I do in all my other cosplay videos, I like to iron everything at the same time. If there's something that requires ironing, I will wait until the next ironing thing. So here I am ironing out all of the darts on pieces one and two. Then I am just going in and pinning the tops of the shoulders together, the sides together, and sewing those pieces together. Now after this part, I mapped out where I wanted the white stripe to be on the skirt. So I measured out about five and a half inches up and then three inches up from that. That was just where I decided to do that. I recommend measuring out your own of where it looks best on your skirt length. Now when I did this, I made sure to add extra notches all throughout the middle. That way the spacing from the bottom to the stripe would be the same amount all the way through. And I made sure to keep the black pieces that I had just cut out and mark them one, two, and three. Cause I knew that each piece of the skirt, when I cut out the black, it was just gonna be a little bit different for each pattern piece. From there, I used the black pieces I had just cut out as pattern pieces for the white fabric. The white fabric I was using was kind of thin, so I doubled it over, so everything is a double thickness. And I made sure to add seam allowances to the sides. That way when I sew it back on the black fabric, it would basically be the same amount that I had taken away. To make it easier on myself though, for the biggest skirt piece, I did fold it in half and then cut it while it was folded in half. Also, if your white fabric is kind of thin, make sure you lint roll between the folds of fabric. I noticed that through, when I looked through, I could see cat hair in the middle and I was like, oh, no, 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 no. So I lint rolled in between to make sure they were nice and clean and I wasn't sewing in cat hair into my costume. It always happens, just cat hair is just a part of it. So here I am pinning the black pieces to the white pieces. Make sure you mark off the pieces that you cut. That way you're pinning them to the right, you know, shapes and stuff. I made sure to mark all of the black pieces with numbers. That way I wasn't pinning the bottom of one to the top of two. So after I was done pinning everything together, I sewed the pieces. Um, this did take a while. After I had sewn them, I kind of clipped the curves on the inside because I knew that when I folded it over, part of the seam allowance was gonna fold one way more than the other. And I didn't want there to be any puckers and buckles. There ended up being puckers and buckles in the end, but it still looked all right to me. Step three, with both number eight pieces, machine stitch upper edge of skirt back eight a scant five eighths from raw edge. Now, you better believe I don't know what a scant is. So, with right sides together and raw edges even, pin center back seam of skirt back from lower edge to three inches below notch. Stitch back stitching at opening to reinforce seam. All right, step number four with piece seven. It says, Machine stitch upper edge of skirt front seven a scant five eighths from raw edge. With right sides together and raw edges even, stitch skirt front to skirt back at side seams. So now that I'm done adding white to the skirt, I'm going to be taking pattern pieces one, two, three, and four and cutting out more white for the front of the shirt. To make things easier on myself, I put on the whole top piece and used pins to mark off how low I wanted the white section of the dress to be. Now, after I had put pins around the area is how far I wanted it, I used the pins to basically make the round off shape. And then from there, I placed the pattern over top of it to kind of draw out on the pattern piece the shape that I wanted. When I looked at Stockings dress, I always viewed that kind of white collar part as kind of like a Lolita shirt with the folds, the ruffles in the middle. So instead of getting a shirt, of course I wanted to just sew it to the dress. Now, 
When you're making pleats or ruffles, always double measure. I ended up cutting out way too much fabric than I actually needed, and then I had to keep folding it over to, you know, scrunch up the, the fabric. So uh, here's me using the pattern that I just marked off the shape of to then make the piece for the front. And then I'm just going ahead and cutting out all of the pieces that I needed in white fabric. And also cutting out the pieces that required interfacing, which was basically just the collar. All those white pieces are totally separate from the triangles that I'm going to be cutting out later. So as you can see, I am cutting out the shape that I'm going to be filling with white in the front. So what I did was I cut out the dip in the front and then I cut out part of the top part in the back. This took me really long to figure out how to pleat because of course, like I said, I messed up and I kept pleating it the wrong way. Eventually, I did figure out how small I had to make my white piece that I had cut out to fit the shape that I had wanted. I kept using the black section that I had cut out from the front as kind of a template to make sure that I had enough seam allowance and that it would be small enough to fit in the space. I didn't want it to be bigger because I wanted it to be equivalent from the fabric that I had just cut out. After I was done, I decided to kind of stay stitch the pleats around the bottom. That way I could mess with the piece and pin it together without fear of the pleats kind of coming out. Throughout this whole process, I have kept the pins and the pleats on the front after I ironed them, I just really wanted them to stay in the space that they were in because I knew I was going to be trying on the dress again and again and again and I didn't want the pleats to kind of fold out because it was rather thin fabric. I also went ahead and sewed just that little bit of the back part that I had cut out to the tops. That way it would just be a whole white collar. I knew the collar part was just going to roll over it so leaving it black wouldn't have mattered but eh, I still thought I would make it white. There's Bruce trying to drag his fingers across my fabric. So now that everything is all done, I can pin it into the space that I had left and then sewing it together. I sewed this right at the edge of the presser foot because that's how much seam allowance I left myself. Now, I recommend going slow around the corner. I ended up kind of nicking the bottom and I went back and kind of fixed it and spread out the thread. But uh, be really careful when you're going around the corner because you're kind of sewing a tight area. So yeah, depending on how big you make the white section on your own piece, it might be a little difficult getting around the corners. Now, once the white piece and the black piece were sewn together, I went ahead and changed it to black thread and then just did a seam all along that line. That way I was catching the seam allowance so it would be going down instead of going up and then you wouldn't see it into the white part. It also made the whole dress look a lot nicer in the front that way everything just kind of stays or it looks nicer to me I guess but if you wanted to you could just cut out the black part and get you know a cute Lolita shirt if you wanted to instead of you know sewing the collar and making the white part could you not please all right so step five and six don't apply to what we're doing so we're gonna skip along to step seven Clip upper edge of skirt to machine stitching. With right sides together and bra edges even, pin upper edge of skirt to bodice, matching centers, seams, and notches. Stitch. Press seam toward bodice. Finishing off step seven. Insert invisible zipper following manufacturer's directions, stitching the remainder of back seam, connecting to previous stitching. Before tacking free end of zipper tape to seam allowance, if necessary, adjust the length of the zipper. I got a zipper that is 20 to 22 inches. All right, so step number eight, we're gonna be using the whole piece, one of the number three pieces and the interfacing piece for number three. And it says, apply interfacing to collar stand three. With right sides together and bra edges even, pin collar stand to neck edge of dress, matching centers, small dots, and notches, placing inner small dot at shoulder seam. Ends extend 3 8 beyond back opening edges. Trim seam, clip curves if necessary. 
Press collar stand out, pressing seam toward collar stand. Step 9 with the number 4 pieces. Apply interfacing to collar. With right sides together and raw edges even, pin collar facing to collar. Stitch unnotched edge of ends and a 3 8 seam. Trim seam in corners. Step number 10 now with the whole piece and then the two four pieces that you just made. It says, turn collar right side out, press. Baste raw edges together. On outside, pin collar to collar stand, matching small dots, large dots, and notches. Stitch. Trim seam, clip curves if necessary. Step 11 with the second number three piece. It says, press under a scant 3 8 on lower edge of collar stand facing. With right sides together and raw edges even, pin facing to collar stand over collar. Matching small dots, large dots, and notches. <laughs> Ooh. Stitch upper edge and ends, being careful not to catch in back edge of collar. Trim seams and corners, clip curves if necessary. Step 12. It says under stitch upper edge of stand facing. Now in the other instructions, this is an under stitch. An under stitch is press facing and seam away from garment, stitch through facing and seam allowances close to seam. So that means that we're just gonna not fold it over yet and then we're gonna take this piece we just sewed on and pull it and then sew right up against here just through that seam allowance part. Now, for the rest of step 12, turn stand facing to the inside, press, pressing out the collar. On inside, pin pressed edge of facing over seam, placing pins on outside. On outside, stitch in the ditch of the seam, catching in the pressed edge of the facing on the inside. So after that, we're basically gonna be pulling this piece over that I ironed down and we're gonna be stitching in the ditch over here, hoping to catch this part on the inside. All right, so we've made it to the sleeve part and we are just going to do the first step. So with our number five pieces, it says, gather upper edge of sleeve, stitch underarm sleeve gather lower edge of sleeve. Now, gathering is the same thing as easing, and it says, loosen needle tension slightly. With right side up, stitch 5 eighths from cut edge using a long stitch. Stitch again 1 fourth from the first stitching within the seam allowance. And we are going to be doing that on the whole round top part and then the arm part. So all up here and then here. All right, so we've made it to the next big section. Here I am opening up the bottom of the sleeve and kind of marking off a rough pattern piece on some extra piece of fabric. Right now, I am mapping out how big I want the points to be on the cuff. Now, I didn't wanna just make a cuff and fold it over. I wanted it to be kind of sewn into the sleeve. So I marked off the seam allowances on the bottom and each side, and then I measured to make sure that I could have five points all the same width and they would be totally even. How I did this, I basically measured um, an inch up for the seam allowance at the bottom, two inches from that, and then three inches from that for the spike part. So there was a medium part that was just white. Those are basically my measurements for how I did it. Once I was done making the pattern piece, I pinned it onto the black sleeve to make sure that everything would fit perfectly and it would look nice before I cut out the white fabric. When I cut out the white fabric, I cut out uh, four pieces. That way I could sew two of them together and basically flip all of the spikes inside out. So here I am pinning the edges, sewing them together. I didn't sew the bottom part closed. That way I could flip it. After everything was all sewn together, I clipped the curves and the edges. That way they would be easier to flip over and the points would be more obvious. If you don't cut like as close as you can to the seam that you just sewed, it won't look very nice. <laughs> so I tried my best to get as close as possible and then I used scissors and kind of like a stick to 
poke out the tops of the points. Once I was all done, I kind of ironed them all down. That way it would make it easier to sew. Firstly, before I decided to sew the points together, I basically pinned the bottom and all of the middle area, that way the cuff would lay down flat on the black sleeve piece. This way, after I pinned it, I could go in and sew the bottom about an inch up. That way I know where I was going to fold. So I sewed on the fold line, basically. So this way, the piece is locked into place where it should be. And now when I sew the tops of the points, it won't kind of shift around. So when I looked up cosplay versions of this, I noticed that people's cuffs were actually a cuff, you know, like the points folded over and I didn't want them to kind of like tip over as I walked around. So I decided to hand sew the points only through the first layer of the white fabric and the black fabric, not making a seam line on the outside. I don't know why I didn't want the seam line on the outside, but for some reason I thought it would look a lot nicer if I had just sewn through that first layer of white fabric and the seam allowance on the inside. So this took a while, so I'm just gonna skip ahead. After I had sewn all the points, I went ahead and I ironed the bottom part where I had sewn up. That way I could fold it in and sew it later. So here's a close-up shot of all of the hand sewing that I did. And as you can see, when I flip it over, there are no seam lines on the outside, which is what I was going for. So now that that piece is ironed up, it made it a lot easier. I basically cut off the black end and one of the white ends. That way it'd be a lot easier to sew through and it wouldn't be as thick of a cuff. So I slowly folded that up and pinned it. And the way I pinned it was, I didn't want another seam line to be on the outside. So I only pinned it through, again, the first layer of white fabric. And just like the points, I hand sewed it. So as you can see, that's my hand sewing. And it goes right in between those layers of fabric so it doesn't show up on the outside. Of course, the seam I had done an inch up does show up when you look like into my cuff, but that's okay. So here are the finished edges. And now I can go ahead and pin the whole length of the sleeve and sew them together. I started off by sewing the white part together first, that way I knew they would match up. And then after I went down the whole length with the black part. So we've made it to the next step in the sleeve part, which is actually gathering and easing. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna flip your sleeve inside out and then make sure that you put the right sides together on what piece is this? <laughs> on your number five piece that we initially started with. So you're gonna put the sleeve into the number five piece, just like this. And you're basically gonna take the top strings on each side and pull until it bunches up and then pin it on the outside of this. That way, when you pull it, it'll be the right side. So right sides together and then you're gonna sew after you've gathered it all. I decided to do an extra seam just like I did on the front around that uh, white part. I went just a little bit over and sewed the seam allowance down. That way when I put my arm in, it wouldn't be like moving up back and forth. So there's a little seam line around that bunched part on the top of the sleeve. All right, so because we did a whole bunch of other sleeve stuff, now we can go all the way to step 22. Turn sleeve right side out. Hold dress wrong side out with armhole toward you. With right sides together, pin sleeve to armhole edge with center small dot at shoulder seam. Matching underarm seams, notches, and remaining small dots. Pull up gathering stitches to fit. To distribute fullness evenly, slide fabric along bobbin threads until there are no puckers or tucks on the seam line. Base stitch. Stitch again 1 8 from first stitching. Trim seam below notches close to stitching. Press only the seam allowance, shrinking out fullness. Press seam toward bodice. So we are going to be finally sewing the arms 
onto the whole dress part. I'm going to leave it here and save the rest for part two. Uh, here's a little sneak peek at the finished dress. Part two will be coming out on the second. Usually when I post these videos, I either post them on the same day, part one and two, or I post them a day after each other. But I thought instead of uploading like I do on the 22nd every month, instead I would just space out my uploads and upload more. So I'm gonna be uploading on the 2nd and the 12th every month, as well as the 22nd. So in part two, we're gonna be finishing off the bottom of the dress and making the bows. So I hope to see you there. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a lovely day.